This is a panel discussion. We're going to take questions from the audience. So think about your questions. They all have different areas of expertise. Chad does seller financing. Seller financing. He, get, he talks people into funding his deals buying their house. Rasheen is the official banker mortgage. He's the guy, the type of guy that you will see when you go to a bank. Now the hoops you're going to have to jump through, the forms, what they require, what they want you to do. Steve is basically private money. He loans money to people. People like Steve loan money to people. They are the private investors. And they have, now they have requirements too. They're just a little bit different than the bank. So now it's up to you with your questions to whomever your question will get one of the guys to answer it. And you all are not that shy. <laughs> Shoot. Okay. Rosalyn? Uh, typically, how long does it take for you to close? Uh, can you please repeat the question? Okay, the question was, how long does it take to close? I'm going to put her on the spot. Are you talking with seller financing or with a bank? With all, all, three. all three. All three. Okay, with seller financing, um, basically you can close as soon as the title work's done. So usually we'll say seven days is, is the soonest. For, for the banking, it's um, typically we ask for 30 days just to make sure we have enough time uh, for a Speak up. We don't have a mic. Sorry. <laughs> for for bank, uh, traditional banking, we ask for 30 days uh, for the minimum. So we, we have enough time to gather documents and uh, uh, close on time. Thank you. Uh, the attributes of private lending is primarily uh, speed. So if the documents are in place, we can close within 10 days. Uh, we closed as quick as um, five days when I had COVID-19. So we had people <laughs> working behind the scenes for me to close pretty quick. Okay. Any other questions? Yes? Do you like to tell them up front that, you, that you're interested in self finances? Yeah, so I always, in that first conversation when I'm talking with a seller, I'll tell them that I buy two ways. I'm either going to buy all cash at a discount or I'm going to pay them over time. So I tell them those are the two options so that they know they're going to get that seller financing offer. And I don't know, a lot of people think that it's like I'm, I need to convince them to let me pay them over time, right? Like it's a, a, almost something they don't want to do. But in reality, for a lot of sellers, it doesn't benefit them to get all cash offer, especially at a discount, right? A lot of sellers, they don't need to take 70% on the dollar um, for their house, and it may cause them problems if they get all cash in a lump sum, whether they have to pay taxes or they're a retiring landlord and they've been living off this monthly rent and they don't want that monthly payment to go away, even though they're tired of dealing with tenants. Um, so there's a whole bunch of reasons that it really benefits them to keep getting that monthly payment. And so, yeah, from, from day one, I tell them that, that I'll make them that offer. I had a question for you. Yeah. Um, so are you, the people you buy from, are they typically other investors or are they homeowners? Um, me personally, I, I've done both. I probably have bought more seller finance deals from investors because they're used to getting monthly payments. Right. Um, but there have been quite a few homeowners where, for whatever reason, they want that monthly income. Um, so I'm thinking of one, they were nearing retirement and they wanted retirement income. Um, another one, they didn't really think they could handle the lump sum that their family would want to um, borrow money from them, and so it benefited them to give them a good each month. I'm just being honest, that's what they told me, right? And so I helped them out in that situation and gave them a little money each month. Is that the only way you buy a seller finance? No, I, I buy two ways. Either all cash at a discount, right? 
um, where I raise money from private. Greater Dayton Rhea is a great source of information for real estate investors. You can learn what you need to do to succeed. You can learn the different opportunities that there are in the marketplace. And you can meet a lot of people that know about this from their own experience. It's a fantastic organization because you can network with uh, more seasoned investors. Uh, you meet all kinds of different vendors uh, each time. Uh, insurance companies, uh, title companies, there's always a different group of people here. And even though I've been involved in real estate since 99, every time I come to a meeting I learn something different. Um, you could also find contractors here. Um, it's just a really great way to network. The benefits that I've gotten from Reggie Rio over the years is being able to tap into a pool of knowledge experienced investors, experienced speakers that allow me to overcome any obstacles I might have for what I'm not familiar with. Way to Urea, we learned that this is a team sport and being a landlord requires quite a few people to help. In January, we found our accountant, attorney, property manager, realtor, who furnishes the lease for the properties. And I believe the appraiser is also in January in 2010 to invest. The whole team was there. I had a property manager, realtors who had deals, and now I have four houses that are all turnkey solutions. I've invested in private LLCs. I didn't bought a note. So by joining an organization like GD Rhea, you too can learn how to be a good investor. And we are an approved vendor with GD Rhea. We've been with you guys about four or five years now. We love networking with the members, and we're here to help. So anything that they need help with, or you can find us here every meeting and uh, ask us whatever questions you need to. You guys have a location?